aiming of the show. So, um, so I, I think um, these two films again have some. Uh, Go ahead uh, to taming the shoe, Radhavendra Rajkumar and uh, Mala Shri. Uh, one can see uh, two taming of the shoe. I also want to make the point that um, you know, in uh, Indian cinema, not just in Canada cinema, um, there are a number of. Uh, you know, what can be called uh, as shrewish women or what are labeled as arrogant women. Uh, in Indian cinema, women with a mind of their own often get labeled as uh, shrews or arrogant uh, female characters. And in fact, one of the ways in which heroism gets explicated in Indian cinema, male heroism gets explicated in Indian cinema is by taming, training such arrogant uh, women, right? So one of the markers of uh, heroism is by bringing them, making them uh, fall in uh, line. You can think of so many different films, uh, including by, uh, you know, stars like uh, Rajnika, Rajnika uh, in Tamil, um, you know, who, who make a career out of uh, such uh, taming. Uh, in this presentation, uh, I have three, uh, you know, broad parts to it. I want to look at, uh, you know, what are the main plot elements of Taming of the Shrew that are borrowed uh, and in which films. Uh, in each instance, how does Taming of the Shrew provide a, a useful prototype? Does it provide a useful prototype at all? And if it does... Uh, in what way does it provide a useful uh, prototype to those films? Uh, towards the end of my presentation, I will juxtapose uh, some clips uh, from Abba Ahudgi. Uh, actually, uh, can you just go back to the previous uh, slide? Uh, I, I had to say something very important about Abba Ahudgi. Uh, See, I placed it in the center of my mapping. Uh, this is, uh, for me, a very, very interesting Kannada film because uh, here is a film where uh, the central character uh, is almost talking back to Taming of the Show. So if, you, if the central premise is Taming is the central premise uh, of uh, the play, Shakespearean play, it's taming. What if the woman refuses to be tamed? So here the 1950s, uh, um, which I kind of think, um, you know, is dialoguing with taming of the shoe. Uh, she gets married and she's very conscious of her freedom being taken away. She is stressed, but not good. If you see the status, ready to embrace her new, uh, her new subject, she has a device. So remember. Uh, anyway, by the end of the So why the hurry to the end of the 
uh, become, uh, you know, suitably uh, reformed and less arrogant. So uh, that's why I think this film is most more of the shoe. Uh, but as I said, uh, Gundama Kaka is probably an angle of the husband uh, taming Gundama's daughter, probably taken from uh, Shakespeare in the um, right? There is visual and verbal elaboration of the process uh, of uh, taming, uh, depriving Kabbalah and Devi in Bahadur Gandu and Nanjundi Kalyana, Kalyana respectively. Uh, of food by the husband. The husband does not, does not allow his uh, wife to eat. Uh, he denies her various amenities. In fact, she's a city-bred girl in Anjundi Kalyana and he takes her to the village, puts her in a uh, small, tiny little uh, cottage, does not give her any of the amenities that she's uh, used to uh, and slowly in, in that process wears her uh, down. In Veera Kesari, when she's kidnapped by Narsimha Nayaka, there is some offering made to her of plain food, which is promptly rejected by her as food fit for uh, cattle. But uh, we do not see Mandaramala suffer greatly. So the techniques used to tame these women don't uh, get deployed in these uh, films. The mother of Narsimha Nayaka puts her foot down against insulting uh, another woman. And so he has to send her back to the palace soon. Uh, she transforms when she sees what a proud, uh, humane and decent lot uh, these common people are. So it's a kind of, you know, uh, her, she undergoes a kind of moral transformation uh, after uh, witnessing uh, the family of Narsimha Nayaka, not by any tactics, uh, you know, violent tactics that are uh, used uh, against her. Next slide, please. Um, in Mane Tumbe the Hindu, the mother-daughter duo are forced on the streets and it is killing hunger, uh, which, is, which forces uh, the daughter to eat the food discarded by others. This teaches her a lesson in humility, uh, no doubt, but it's not the husband handing out uh, the, this lesson to her, as I already mentioned. In Abba Ahurugi, there is no possibility of the husband depriving her of food or comforts to teach her a lesson. In fact, Sharmishta is more than equal to her husband's attempts at uh, uh, trying to deprive her. When he says, you won't eat food, she says, of course I will eat food. And then when he says, you have to eat food, she says, of course I will not eat. You know, so it's almost like uh, it's turning on its head um, the way in which uh, taming of the shoe works. When she goes away from the city, uh, this is also something, uh, uh, you know, that as researchers in cinema, we often come across uh, this uh, problem. Uh, the version of, tame, of uh, Abba Ahurugi that is available to us uh, on YouTube um, seems to have certain missing parts. For instance, how does Sharmishta even agree to marry? Uh, she is... Uh, the president of an anti-marriage women's league, you know, in uh, the film. So how does she even agree to marry? We don't know because there's a jump and the next moment we see her, she's gone to a village uh, to recite. Uh, and it's in, in fact, it looks like the husband has taken her to the village uh, to teach her a lesson. But she says, this is all fine. You know, it, this is where I, I like it very much. Uh, you people, uh, you're not, uh, you don't understand the folks around here, whereas I empathize with them. So everything that is um, uh, that is attempted by the husband uh, as a taming device is uh, appropriated by her, uh, you know, to, for her own uh, ends. The love that she watches. So finally, it is the love that she watches expressed in song and dance by a couple of forest dwellers. Uh, and a play which is enacted by hired performers that transforms uh, Sharmisha. So it's not so much the husband himself. Uh, it is the husband, uh, but through these kind of devious means, um, you know, by using uh, uh, actors uh, to try and do the job for him. Next slide. In Nan Nanjundi Kalyana, Raghuchandra alias Nanjundi, has to fulfill a promise made by his father to his now estranged sister's uh, family. So how is, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, this uh, prototype of 
uh, Taming of the Shrew used uh, in each of the films uh, that I have mentioned. Um, Raghuchandra has to carry out his father's promise. Um, uh, the father has promised his now estranged sister that he will get his son married to her daughter. But there is no connection for many years between uh, the two families. So if Raghuchandra was, uh, were to approach um, uh, Devi's father, he will get thrown out. So it is, um, you know, in this complicated uh, scenario that he takes on the persona of Nanjundi, uh, a long lost brother uh, of Devi's mother and enters uh, the house. Raghuchandra lives in the village, but Devi is city bred. She's bold, she's westernized in her ways, college educated, English speaking with a mind of her own. Um, and um, uh, our Raghuchandra is, uh, you know, uh, someone who is uh, of the village. He belongs, uh, I mean, he lives in the village. How do you, uh, you know, kind of uh, bridge this gap. The man in uh, the marital relation is supposed to have the upper hand, right? Uh, in this instance, uh, he comes from uh, the village, whereas she is city bred uh, and therefore in a position of greater social power and authority. Taming of the shrew becomes a useful prototype to equalize this kind of imbalance and make the husband gain an upper hand. So, um, in uh, Taming of the Shrew, we get a no, we get a no sense of difference in class or social standing between Petruchio uh, and Kay. But in this film, the Taming of Baby is a part of realigning her social uh, position to that of uh, her marital uh, home. Uh, how does this uh, prototype, uh, you know, how is it useful in Veera Kesari and Bahadur Gandu? Uh, it is to make a blinkered girl. In both these films, um, the central character, the one who is, uh, you know, uh, tamed within quotes, is blinkered by her superior uh, social position. She is a princess um, and um, her sense of entitlement and privilege, uh, you know, becomes in the way of her seeing the merit, bravery, and superiority of a commoner uh, who is a social inferior, and to recognize him as a man, which he does not do to begin with. The princess is also a channel or a conduit between the ruler and the ruled. It is through her that the powerless hunted uh, down subjects try to reach those uh, in power. How she regards them uh, matters when she is in power because she is supposed to now become queen. So how, um, you know, she rules over them. Will she, um, you know, perpetuate a reign of terror uh, against them? Will she be an oppressive ruler or will she be sympathetic to uh, the common uh, people when uh, she gains power? So this is where Taming of the Shrew, the prototype of uh, Taming of the Shrew becomes uh, useful in uh, 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 Bahadur Gandu and Veera Kesari. Um, how does it uh, get, uh, you know, how does this prototype uh, get used or become useful for Abba Ahurugi? Uh, it is useful to delineate a strong anti-marriage proto-feminist uh, character I mean, uh, think about it. We are uh, talking about uh, 1959 uh, film. We have uh, a proto-feminist uh, female character in the film who is president of a league uh, of women who are against marriage, who see it as an institution of enslavement of women, who see marriage as an encumbrance uh, in the way of women's achievements in various fields. So she's actually a public figure, you know, who runs this organization, this institution, um, uh, and is the president of that. Another accomplished woman who's part of the organization, who's said to be an MLA, uh, is a married woman, uh, and therefore there's a lot of tension uh, between Sharmishta and uh, this uh, woman. Uh, she's part of the women's group uh, who acknowledges the expansiveness of uh, the vision of the league, but thinks uh, its means are too radical. So she keeps 
trying to you know kind of uh, bring them down uh, at various instances even when sharmisha is married she is more than ready to take on her husband through her argumentativeness which he can rarely match so the shrew of taming of the shrew is provided a rational discursive base which may be difficult to digest for all for all around but that is because she is well ahead uh, of her times in mane tum with the hennu this is a prototype which is useful because there are a couple of shrewish women the mother and her daughter who are mean quarrelsome loud and manipulative but as i i think there are other models that are available and tots taking uh, of the shrew uh, does not figure very much next slide uh, like. Next. Yeah, I've gone quite ahead in my presentation. Yeah. Next. Um, from Abba Ahudgi to Bahadur uh, Gandu. Now I'm uh, kind of trying to uh, conclude uh, my talk. Uh, if there is time, we'll watch a few clips. Otherwise, this will be uh, the conclusion. Abba Ahudgi offered uh, a prototype of a modern but misunderstood woman critiquing patriarchy from a position, though it is not named so, um, which is not far from a feminist one. So it's not named as a feminist uh, position in the film, but uh, it's not far. So that's why I said. uh you know you can regard her as a proto feminist when suresh played by dr rajkumar uh, in abba hudugi husband of sharmishta's younger sister by way of his wishes for sharmishta at the end of the you know uh, narrative uh, says that she could give birth to a boy or a girl you know this is the mangala time just before the appearance of shubham on the screen where um, sharmishta is asked to take everyone's blessings so suresh uh, played by dr rajkumar says uh, fine i mean you can have either a boy or a girl uh, you know give birth to either a boy or a girl it doesn't uh, matter uh, i felt a pang um, you know where he when he said it does not matter if it's a boy or a girl but let there be no one like you who will follow you know and i think it almost seemed like a prophetic pronouncement uh, or has proved to be a curse in kannada cinema uh, because such female characters virtually disappear from the kannada screen in the coming years if they do briefly make uh, you know a blazing appearance like in miss leelavathi uh, a decade uh, a little over uh, a few years later it is only to be taught a lesson otherwise uh, such women uh, rarely come up uh, on the kannada uh, uh, screen next uh, slide dr rajkumar who is on the periphery of abba ahudgi gains center stage by the time we come to bahadur gandu so this also tells us something about the nature of stardom itself in kannada Mainavati plays the central role in Abba Ahudgi. Dr. Rajkumar is one of the peripheral uh, figures in the film, uh, among a, a number of others. There's uh, Narsim Raju. There are a whole host of, um, you know, actors in the uh, film, essaying various uh, characters, and uh, Dr. Rajkumar is also one of them. Uh, he, of course, has a duet, uh, but uh, really, he's not. Uh, the hero uh, as we know him uh, let's say in bahadur gandu as the male star becomes the fulcrum of cinema two things can be noticed so over film history i'm uh, making these two comments the line between the man wooing and taming or harassing the girl is being erased or to put it differently this becomes the mode of manifestation of love so you can see it in songs like uh, hey ninagagi or swabhimana da nalle uh, we we'll listen probably to uh, one or two of them uh, in a while 
so much so that in the present day discussion of female consent women have had to say again and again that no means no you know that it doesn't mean that uh, women are enjoying this process of being tamed or harassed or being pursued uh, in the male centric uh, films male star centric films uh, to this day this is uh, kind of the prototype which gets uh, followed that the male star uh, you know uh, keeps uh, keeps on his uh, pursuit uh, of the woman uh, of the uh, you know of his partner even when she says uh, when she's not interested uh, hoping that uh she will finally say yes uh, in the end the male hero is not only a lover uh and as you will see from uh, the song that i'll play for you the male hero is not only a lover but also the moral and social epicenter of uh, the film in bahadur gandu we will see that and one of his so called noble tasks is to suitably reform the female in uh, the film so this becomes his manifestation of uh, you know moral uh, superiority uh, by trying to teach her uh, a lesson uh, if we have time uh, i would like to play uh, you know very these short uh, clips uh, from the film okay so in which case um, the clips are there uh, you can enjoy it uh, you know maybe later one clip uh, then please let us play abba ahudgi abba ahudgi please uh, 1 23 22 to uh, whatever time we'll we'll just stop uh, in a in a minute or so is what he says and she says i refuse to have anything to do with such a god you know cannot uh, acknowledge his uh, creation uh, so you can see she's uh, someone uh, who has thought about things so she's not someone uh, who is uh, simply arrogant uh, as an attitude but uh, someone who has an ideologically thought out uh, position and how rare that is for uh, kannada cinema thank you uh, very much uh, all of you uh, for listening to me um and thanks again to the audience thank you ma'am for your fruitful insights i really appreciate it it was an excellent talk Talk by Professor Mitla Amar, um, who is a professor at DFLU, Hyderabad, 
and a duck was titled uh, and thus I'll curve our mind and um, headstrong humor, uh, taming of the free in Kannada cinema. So what exactly uh, she did in her talk was uh, she looked at the prototypes of uh, timing of shoe in uh, Canada iconic films which are produced between 1958 to 1989. Uh, based on the films, I mean, uh, which, which were produced between 1958 and 1989, she um, interpreted the prototypes which are present in the story as well as techniques. So uh, she has interpreted some, you know, I mean, five films, uh, starting from Manetum Vida Hindu, Abba Haudi, Veera Kesri Bhagatur Kandu, Nanjungi Kalyana. And it was an excellent talk. Um, we have, uh, I think, five to ten minutes with us. We can take a few questions, one or two questions, if there are any. Thank you, Nikhil Aman, for the talk. Um, when you mentioned that um, such characters like Sharmish uh, uh, were virtually absent, of course, similar to Sharmita, I think it's difficult to find in Kannada cinema in the later um, decades. Uh, but however, there was always, uh, also a, a right of some uh, category called, I think, Lalita Gopalan, dance in that category as. Uh, avenging women uh, cinema as well. So, and which I think develops uh, much later uh, till the point you have stopped uh, analyzing. Of course, the, I think the, uh, uh, like how would you look at it um, parallel to the rise of stardom, uh, male stardom uh, in uh, cinema and alongside which uh, she was doing which uh, most of the girls for uh, alongside uh, other uh, uh, actresses as well. I'm just curious to know how you are analyze this. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Dr. Mahima, for that uh, very interesting um, observation. Um, in a way, um, uh, you can say the transformation, um, you know, uh, of uh, 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 this kind of a figure, uh, the one who is. Um, questioning who has the upper hand um, becomes um, someone who is almost like a virago, someone who, you know, takes on um, the world as the male hero does, right? So it's almost as if, uh, you know, she's taking upon herself. Uh, Malashi herself uh, played a number of uh, such roles uh, in the form of uh, police and, uh, right? So, uh, what the uh, male hero can do, I can do even better, right? So, but the uh, it, it's more uh, uh, you know it's it's more uh, like uh, let us say drawing the conventions, the protocols from this. Opposition. But it's something that they are attempting, a path that they are attempting 
to forge uh, in these films. Um, but uh, you know, as we go on, uh, I, I felt that this was not available. Maybe it would be interesting to see uh, the metamorphosis. Uh, you know, the way uh, you have uh, leaked the trajectory. Uh, maybe it would be uh, interesting uh, to see that as well. similar but this is um, you know a, a, a character that keeps recurring you can think of so many Rajnikan's films who makes a career out of uh, you know taming uh, women um, so uh, fans uh, of Dr. Rajkumar like sir uh, Raj Donald, sir, I feel bad when I say this but it's not just Dr. Rajkumar this is the nature of male stardom uh, in Indian cinema. Thank you. Uh, with this, we have uh, come to an end of this particular session. I thank Professor uh, Nikola Mann for uh, insightful presentation. Thank you very much. Man. Thank you. Thank the resource persons, Professor B. N. Balaji and uh, Professor Nikila H. for enriching your knowledge. And I also thank Mahendra sir. Uh, with the closure of this session, I request Dr. Prakash Barikai to proceed with the next session. Also, good evening to, to all. Uh, yes, Can you play this song? Can you play this song?
This is the fourth session, Dr. Ras Kumar and Indian Cinema. I request the chief guests, Professor Nikila H. Madam, and Dr. Majulakshi Madam, and Professor Basara Shibunu, sir, to come on the dais. In his absence, I welcome Professor Dr. Satyanara and sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Central University of Karnataka. And all the dignitaries, this is persons, this is scholars, here is for English. As you all know, today is 93rd birth anniversary of Dr. Rajkumar. Inga Nadoru Patta Swamaya Dr. born on 24th April 1929, who passed away. On 12th April 2006, has brought a new message to the society through his films and also through his life. He has been, though he passed away, he has been a cultural icon, matinee idol, Nathar Saro Bahama, Bangarada Manusha, Varanata, Ghana Gandharma. Padma Bhushan, Dada Sahib Palke Award, and a national award for his singing, uh, who bagged a national award for his singing, the only veteran actor from India who has received the K Colonel Award, United States, long ago, in the 60s. So this unique program, once again, I welcome all the dignitaries and request Professor Nikila H. Madam to share her views on Dr. Rajkumar and Indian Senate. Madam, please. Um. A very good afternoon. I'm back uh, again. Uh, this time uh, to uh, speak in a more free flowing fashion uh, about Dr. Rajkumar. Uh, it's a momentous occasion. Uh,
transformative it was. So middle class um, Karnataka largely, not just middle class, I think across all sections of society, you find people who will say, uh, who will talk about how Rajkumar's films were formative of their growing up values. So there's a sense of uh, what he meant uh, to the Kannada uh, society. There's also a psychological kind of an impact that, uh, you know, young people um, uh, drew uh, from uh, Rajkumar. So you can talk about him uh, as that. You can also look at the symbolic nature. What did a star like this stand for? Uh, and in a kind of uh, elaboration of this, but also taking it, uh, you know, giving it a, a different set of implications. Uh, Madhav Prasad, who till recently was my colleague uh, in EFL University, um, in uh, his various uh, writings on Rajkumar, particularly uh, in his book, Siddhe Politics, uh, where he looks at, uh, where he places Rajkumar, uh, Dr. Rajkumar, along with uh, other stars uh, such as NTR and MGR uh, talks about a particular kind of uh, uh, political context uh, in which uh, Uh, and, um, just by, uh, you know, kind of drawing the map and saying uh, you are now Karnataka, you don't become Karnataka. Uh, how do you uh, make uh, 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 give a sense of me feeling? Uh, how like uh, NG... MGR, NTR, and uh, Rajkumar transitioned from cinema uh, to politics, but that they came to stand for a particular kind of politics, which he calls as cine politics. So he says, um, for people, you know, after the formation. Uh, of India as a nation, Billy Bahadurta. You know, Billy was right there, right? So there was a disconnect between the people and the state. So what these stars did was to create a certain kind of virtual or a shadow polity, right? So a polity where these people, where uh, Kannadigas or let's say Telugus or Tamils felt empowered in the kingdom or in the republic of cinema. Uh, the republic of cinema uh, revolved around particular stars. So they uh, particular stars like uh, Rajkumar or MGR or NTR. So this is what he defines as cine politics, uh, a kind of virtual republic that gets formed around uh, stars. Uh, and in the Canada context, uh, uh, Rajkumar in some ways comes to stand for uh, this kind of a virtual uh, polity. Uh, so where people felt that here is someone who speaks our language, who addresses our state, our nation, uh, whatever India is, uh, you know, we don't really know. Or whatever the Indian state stands for, uh, we don't really know. And that's why the connect. Um, it is true uh, that Dr. Rajkumar was a wonderful actor. I mean, you you can, uh, for those of you who are getting introduced to him through just this one song, uh, you know, uh, which kind of increases the pulse rate of every Kannadiga uh, here, uh, you would have seen what a fantastic uh, actor he is. So he is that, but uh, it's also the moment, it's also the political moment, the linguistic reorganization of states uh, through which uh, different kinds of uh, language-based territories have, which were under different political dispensations hitherto, particularly during uh, the colonial period and even before that. 
they all have to now reimagine themselves um, as a, a, a new kind of uh, territory uh, and uh, a new kind of state within the larger uh, state. And that's that was the function uh, of cinema, according to uh, Madhav Prasad. So it's an argument that is, uh, in some ways, very convincing, um, you know, which uh, explains to us uh, that, uh, you know, uh, others, uh, for instance, MSS Pandyan, who has looked at uh, MGR, uh, the, the, the Tamil context, you know, asked the very interesting uh, question, you know, in his book called The Image Trap. Um, he asked the very interesting question. MGR, who goes on to become uh, chief minister in Tamil Nadu, went on to, um, you know, do a number of anti-people uh, uh, policies. So his rule um, uh, had many things that people, you, you, you could easily say were anti-people. Yet those very people seem to love him and vote him to power again and again and again. So Pandian asks, uh, what does it mean? Does it mean that, um, you know, people were gullible? And more or less, that's the kind of uh, answer that uh, Pandian uh, gives us, that it looks like people don't have their own interest at heart. Uh, maybe they are carried away by the kind of roles that uh, MGR played on the screen. On the screen, MGR played um, the role of uh, uh, an auto, auto rickshaw driver, cycle rickshaw driver, uh, you know, people from the subaltern classes. Maybe it's because they identified with those roles that what he was actually doing as chief minister, people uh, could not identify and uh, that's why. So is it gullibility on the part of the people, uh, you know, that stars like Rajkumar, um, you know, uh, they vested so much love, so much affection, so much hope and faith. Uh, so this is one kind of a view that people don't know enough uh, and therefore they believe uh, the make-believe world uh, that is being uh, created by the stars uh, and that's why, um, uh, you know, they, uh, they get carried away by the screen images. Uh, whereas Madhu Prasad uh, is telling us that it is people who shape the stars. So what Rajkumar could do or could not do on the screen is not determined. He may be a god, but he does not determine his godhood. It is people who determined what kind of roles he acted in. For instance, in one of my papers, uh, I asked the question, um, you know, his uh, last, uh, between uh, 1954, uh, when... Uh, um, uh, he plays uh, the role of Bedara Kanapa. And 1966, uh, when uh, he plays uh, uh, the role of um, um, uh, Raghavendra Saint, um, uh, you know, between this period, uh, he goes on uh, to act in uh, over 50 Bhakta films, Bhakta Cheta Erbodu, um, uh, you know, Purandara Dasa Erbodu, you name it, he has played Ogileshwara, um, a number of uh, such bhakta uh, films. What happens after 1966? What happens after uh, Mantralaya Mahatme? Uh, not only does Rajkumar almost stop, Bhakta Kumbhara was the exception, and uh, Shivamechita Karnapa, which was more uh, recent, uh, except those that I asked was, how come, you know, he almost a roles. And not only does he stop playing Bhakta roles, the genre itself almost completely disappears from Kannada. Uh, Bhakti in cinema or devotionals, which is a founding genre of Kannada, of uh, Indian cinema, virtually disappears from Kannada cinema. So why does this happen? Uh, to me, I think the answer is, in many of these Bhakta roles, uh, Rajkumar plays, uh, you know, the Shudra Bhakta, uh, Bhakta from the lower caste, who is oppressed by uh, the upper caste, uh, denied access to God. He plays Tukaram as well, denied access to God, denied access to spirituality. And in film after film, uh, you see him 
uh, you know, kind of getting uh, whipped. If you remember Bhakta Kanaka Rasali, the famous song where uh, he's begging for uh, God uh, to open the door. and give him a darshan and he's being with. It looked like it was untenable after a particular point in time for his fans, for his bhaktas out there to see Rajkumar in humiliating roles. So his stardom was so big that they wanted him to play king, not play victim, uh, not uh, Dr. Tarkeshwar has uh, written about the Bond films, um, you know, uh, so where he plays this modern swashbuckling uh, kind of uh, hero, uh, which is again hugely uh, popular. So it looked like certain genres uh, start coming in, in, getting introduced into Kannada cinema. So Bond films, uh, uh, you know, were not that I mean, it's not that uh, they were there in other other languages and they come. In fact, genre. Uh, You know, for or in uh, at least the South Indian context. So, what genres come in? Uh, what genres stop? Uh, I think it's also to a large extent uh, determined by what fans want to see uh, of Rajkumar, how they want to uh, see him, what they want him to do, uh, and so on. Um, so, in, in that sense, I think uh, it's very uh, important. Uh, but what did uh, he do and what did he mean to Kannada cinema? 1954, historically speaking, Canada cinema. If today we have a cinema, you know, there are so many uh, hundreds of languages in India, but there are only about 18 to 20 filmmaking languages in India. So if Canada got made, um, you know, in very few centers of filmmaking. There was Bombay, there was Calcutta, and a little later, Madras became a center of uh, filmmaking. In Madras, films would get made in uh, different languages uh, simultaneously. Let's take the example of uh, a Telugu film, uh, Maya Bazaar. So, this film in which, uh, you know, India, so... Again, notice one more aspect in a film like uh, Maya Bazaar. Uh, NTR is among the many stars in that film. And who is to say that Savitri is not the main star of that film? She is, you know. So, like I was saying, Mainavati in Abba Ahudgi is really the star of that film. And the main stars are on the periphery. In Maya Bazaar too, NTR is among, of course, he plays Krishna, but he is among the Many other stars, S.C. Rangarao is a star, Ezra is there in the film. 
So what was happening in Madras was there are all these people, uh, these actors who are making films. There is a Telugu film called Maya Bazaar which gets made. There's also a Tamil film, Maya Bazaar, which gets made. Now, how do you distinguish between Telugu and Tamil? It's in different languages. In fact, uh, you know, uh, people do have brain. Recorded uh, the history of, of uh, 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 in, in get made uh, at night because apparently Canada films had a smaller budget. Uh, so you could not afford to have your own sets. So uh, the night shift uh, apparently was half the rate of the day shift. So you would make the Canada film, uh, you know, uh, in, in the same place. So just by changing the stars, remember that it was the presence or absence of a male star that determined the language of the film. Maya Bazaar in Th Tamil is the same as Maya Bazaar in Telugu. Gemini Ganeshan substitutes for uh, ANR. Like that, there were a number of films in which Rajkumar, uh, you know, just reprise the role that was uh, played by MGR or NTR in the Kannada context. So you can also see what male stardom is doing at that point in time. Male stars are also coming to stand for the language, the particular language. Uh, it is uh, one of the uh, uh, the, the pride uh, that people say uh, the only Kannada, uh, the, the only non-Kannada film uh, that uh, Rajkumar acted in uh, was a Telugu film, which was a remake of uh, uh, Kannapa. Otherwise, uh, he, was, he did not act in any other uh, other language uh, films. So that tells you the nature and function of male stardom. They came to be identified with a particular language. The female stars freely circulated. Savitri is in the Tamil version, Telugu version, and any other version that would have uh, come up. Even now, right? Females start circulate around uh, uh, and among languages. The male stars get largely tied down to a particular uh, language. So you just by substituting the male. His films were successful, so which made others say, we want to make more films. And that's how the Canada film industry uh, largely based on the success that uh, Rajkumar found. Uh, uh, film industry, um, you know, he played a major role. That is required, uh, let's say, on figures like uh, Rajkumar, uh, stars like Rajkumar. So it is one thing to say, okay, uh, you know, he's, uh, uh, these are the films that he acted in. Uh, you can, uh, you know, it's necessary. You can also do an analysis of uh, his films uh, and all that. As a preliminary effort, if we really think that Rajkumar is important as a preliminary 
whatever films are available some of them digitized versions uh, but most of uh, the films don't have so kannada as much as we own rajkumar and say kannada kannada the sampattu it's important for him to become uh, the sampattu of all indians and that way he possible only if he uh, crosses uh, language boundaries the second is the making of the rajkumar phenomenon or the making of rajkumar as Uh, an actor, or uh, you know, as an important uh, player on Indian uh, cinema, we have not documented enough uh, the function of uh, you know cinematographers like Dore Raj, uh, who are uh, his uh, cinematographers during the early period, singers like P. B. Srinivas, uh, you know, G. V. People like G. V. Iyer, uh, who apparently wrote and selected uh, uh, scripts. uh for him or even the role uh, of his wife rajkumar in producing you know so such an important figure in the kannada film industry uh, we only know her as uh, a wife of dr rajkumar uh she did more than that where is uh, the documentation or where is the research that is necessary that tells us the role played by uh, mrs parvatama rajkumar Uh, who was so important in the making of uh, the rajkumar phenomenon we need studies uh, of this kind and another very uh, important uh, study uh, you know that uh, may be necessary is uh, of looking at the films of rajkumar that have been remade uh, i was just uh, you know doing a preliminary survey there are apparently 18 to 20 films of rajkumar that have been remade in other languages but rajkumar also acted in remakes from other languages so it is important for us to look at where rajkumar traveled how in which form right and uh, how did he establish his own stamp his own uh, chap uh, as it were as an actor in films that are uh, remade from other languages so if students from um, you know uh, 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 want to come uh, and work in film studies uh, uh, and show interest in working on kannada cinema i would happily entrust these projects uh, to them i think with these words uh, i'll stop uh, and thank you very much for asking me to share my thoughts thank you Thank you so much, Madam. Now I request Dr. Joseph Madam to say a few words for about eight to ten minutes. Okay. Professor, Professor Johnson, this is your eight. Number four. Professor Dean School of Humanities, Professor Nikila Madam, Dr. Prakash, all respectable delegates, faculty of UK, and faculty and students. So today, the morning to see you are present. Great English scholar Shakespeare's their contribution. This now we can come to Canada, the great actor, Dr. Rajkumar. Maybe I thank Nikhila Madam. What Rajkumar? What their contribution? He is explaining in Canada, but now I explain that I'm speaking in Canada. Sorry, explain in English. But I am speaking in Kannada because Kannada Rajkumar, Kannada the Kannada. 
ಆ ಕಟ್ಟಾಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲೇ ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ನನ್ಗೆ ಅನಿಸ್ತು ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಹುಟ್ಟು ಹಬ್ಬವನ್ನ ಮತ್ತೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನೇಣು ಪರ್ವತ ಅಂತಾನೆ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಭಾಷೆಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟಂತ ಶೇಕ್ಸ್ಪಿಯರ್ ಅವರ ಕಾಂಟ್ರಿಬ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಮತ್ತು ರಾಜ್ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವರ ಇನ್ನು ಭಾಷೆಯ ಕಲೆ ಸಾಹಿತ್ಯ ಹಾಗೂ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿಗೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟ ಇರುವಂತಹ ಗೌರವ ಅಂತ ಕೂಡ ನಾನು ಭಾವಿಸ್ತೀನಿ ಇದರ ಆಯೋಜಕರಿಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆಲ್ಲೂ ನನ್ನ ಕೃತಜ್ಞತೆಗಳನ್ನ ತಿಳಿಸ ರಾಜ್ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವರಿಗೆ ಮಾತಾಡುವಂತಹದ್ದು ಒಂದು ಭಾಗ್ಯ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನನ್ನ ನನ್ನ ಅನಿಸಿಕೆ ಕಾರಣ ಇಷ್ಟೇ ಅವರು ಒಟ್ಟು ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅದೊಂದು ಮಹಾನ್ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಸರಳತೆ ಮುಕ್ತತೆ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಬದುಕಂತೆ ಕಲ್ಪಯೋಗಿಯಂತೆ ಶರಣಂತೆ ಕಳೆದಿದ್ದು ಕನ್ನಡದ ಇತಿಹಾಸದ ಒಂದು ದಾಖಲೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅದು ತಪ್ಪಾಗಲ್ಲ ಕನ್ನಡ ಜನತೆ ಅವರ ಅಭಿಮಾನಿಗಳನ್ನ ಸರ್ವಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಅಭಿಮಾನಿ ಒಂದು ಸರಿ ಅಭಿಮಾನಿಗಳ ದೇವರು ಅಂತ ಕರೀತಾರೆ ತಾವು ಅಭಿನಯಿಸಿದ ಚಿತ್ರಗಳ ಮೂಲಕ ಕೌಟುಂಬಿಕ ಮೌಲ್ಯವನ್ನು ಎತ್ತಿ ಎತ್ತಿ ಹಿಡಿದ ಜನಮಾನಸದಲ್ಲಿ ಸದರ್ಭ ಚುಚಿಯ ಹೊಸ ದಿಗಂತವನ್ನ ಅನಾವರಣಗೊಳಿಸಿದ ಸಮರ್ಥ ನಾಯಕ ಕನ್ನಡ ಸಾಂಸ್ಕೃತಿಕ ಲೋಕದ ನೇತಾರ ತೆರೆಯ ಬಾಯಲ್ಲಿ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಮುಖ್ಯ ರಾಜ್ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನೋಡ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ತೆರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಏನನ್ನ ಅವರು ಮಾತಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ಅದನ್ನ ನಿಜ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ತೋರಿಸಿದ ಧೀಮಂತ ರೀತಿ ಕನ್ನಡಿಗರ ಹೃದಯ ಸಿಂಹಾಸನದ ಅರಭಿಷಕ್ತ ದೊರೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗಲ್ಲ ಇವರ ಜೀವನದ ಪ್ರಯಾಣದಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಖ ದುಃಖ ಸಮೃದ್ಧಿಯನ್ನ ಕಂಡಂತವರು ವೃತ್ತಿ ಜೀವನದಲ್ಲಿ ಗೌರಿಶಿಕರಾದವರು ಇಂತಹ ಅಪೂರ್ವ ವ್ಯಕ್ತಿಯ ಯಾವ ಮಜಲನ್ನ ತಿರುವುದರೂ ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಸಾರ್ಥಕತೆಯ ಆದರ್ಶಗಳು ಎಂದು ಕಾಣ್ತೇವೆ ರಾಜ್ ಸಾಧನೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಯಾವ ಶಬ್ದಗಳಿಂದ ಇದ್ರು ಅವರ ಪರಿಪೂರ್ಣ ಜೀವನ ಮೇಲೆ ಅವರು ಆದ್ರೆ ನನ್ನ ತಂದೆಯ ಗುರು ಬದುಕಿನ ಪಾಠಗಳನ್ನು ಕಲಿಸಿದ್ರು ಆ ಪಾಠವನ್ನೇ
ನಾನು ಜೀವನದುದ್ದಕ್ಕೂ ಪಾಲಿಸಿದೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾನೆ ಒಂದು ಮೇರು ನಟನಾಗಿ ಕನ್ನಡದಲ್ಲಿ ಹುಡುಕಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಸೊ ಒಂದು ಅಂಶವನ್ನು ನಾವು ಬೆಳಗ್ಬಹುದು ಯಾವುದೇ ಸಾಧನೆಯನ್ನ ಯಾವುದೇ ಮನುಷ್ಯ ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಅವನಿಗೆ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣವೇ ಬೇಕಾಗಿಲ್ಲ ಅನುಭವದ ಪಾಠವೇ ಸಾಕು ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಕ್ಷಿಯಾಗಿ ರಾಜ್ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅವರು ನಮ್ಮ ಮುಂದೆ ನಿಲ್ತಾರೆ ಅವರ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಸಿನಿಮಾಗಳು ಕೂಡ ಒಂದು ಮಾಸ್ಟರ್ ಡಿಗ್ರಿಯನ್ನ ಪಡೆದಷ್ಟೇ ಅನುಭವವನ್ನ ಪ್ರತಿಯೊಬ್ಬ ಪ್ರೇಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೂ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಪ್ರತಿಭೆಯನ್ನ ಪಡಿಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಶಿಕ್ಷಣದಿಂದ ಮಾತ್ರನೇ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸಾಧಿಸುವಂತ ಗುರಿ ಗುರಿ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಸಾಧಿಸುವಂತ ಛಲ ಇರ್ಬೇಕು ಅದೆರಡೂ ನಮ್ಮ ರಾಜ್ಕುಮಾರ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಇತ್ತು ಆ ಸಾಧನೆ ಗುರಿಯಿಂದಲೇ ಅವರು ಇಡೀ ಭಾರತದ ಸಿನಿಮಾದಲ್ಲಿ ಮೇರು ನಟನಾಗಿ ಮೆರೆದ್ರು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಬಹಳ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ಆ ಅವರು ಕನ್ನಡದ ಪಾಲಿಗೆ ಬೇಡರ ಕಣ್ಣಪ್ಪ ಈ ಎರಡಲ್ಲೂ 
He said, I am Dr. Raj Kumar, Kenta Abhimani. And don't give a chance to this Kenta Abhimani to talk about Raj Kumar. <laughs> Uh, Professor uh, uh, Nikila H and Dr. Majulakshi, Dr. Prakash, and uh, all the invitees, uh, students, participants, ladies and gentlemen. I will take very less time to talk about uh, Shakespeare because uh, all of us are waiting to watch this very interesting uh, solo play by Shri Bhakti Madam is here to
Minister and the NGR, they wanted to become Chief Minister. So I don't say that it is wrong to become Chief Minister. But Rajkumar nice did not have uh, uh, this ambition. Uh, I wanted to be a politician. And the uh, for example, and when they have been
So this was almost a uh, few kilometers away from the studio in which the film was uh, shot. He was shot. Of the distance, he walked the walk into his friend's house, three o'clock, he knocked on the door. He opened the door and he asked Raj Kumar to come at this hour for Thank you. 